So you might be thinking Metaverse or, you know, Meta from Facebook is like a blessing in disguise, especially for lucid dreamers, video gamers and shifters. Well, I would say no, and I'll explain exactly why in this video. So Meta is Facebook's new company name. As I'm sure you've heard, it's been announced now. Meta is like the new new name that encompasses everything they, they want to do, apparently, uh, involving mainly the metaverse and virtual reality. So if you haven't already know, if you didn't already know, they have a company called Oculus, which is a VR company that makes virtual reality headsets that connect you to the metaverse with through your Facebook account. So a few things that I want to explain about this, and then we'll explain. Well, firstly, I'll, I'll just cover the basics of what it is and how it works, and then we're going to talk about why it's bad. The Oculus is a device that it's like a headset you wear, has cameras, motion sensors, and it tracks your eye movements even. And you wear that and you hold these kind of sticks like this that allow you to interact with a virtual reality world. The word metaverse means virtual reality world essentially, but what Facebook have done is they've called their company Meta in order to capture most of that market traffic and keyword search traffic. Meta, the metaverse in, you know, in itself and as a word, doesn't belong to Facebook. Metaverse just means a virtual reality world. There are countless metaverse worlds or metaverses, um, especially in the crypto world, which are decentralized, as in they are not controlled by any one individual or even any one company. This is really critical to understand. I'll get onto that later. Um, but for, for the purposes of this video, the metaverse we're talking about is Facebook's metaverse, the one they own and the one they have control over. I'm not talking about metaverse in general, as in all virtual reality worlds. I'm talking only about Facebook's one, the one they control and own. Uh, we'll just call that Facebook metaverse for now to keep things simple. So like I said, the Oculus is the device which allows you to interact with their face with Facebook's metaverse. You can basically work inside these virtual workspaces. You can have business meetings, you can have social events, conferences, and it's all positioned as this very lovely kind of fancy, fantasy, fancy virtual reality world. So far, so good. Okay, I mean, it actually looks, in terms of the technology, it looks pretty good so far. You can track your hands, you can have these custom virtual workspaces, you can have events and all kinds of stuff like that. So what's the problem? Well, the first problem is the Facebook own it. So you, firstly, you're forced, in order to use the Oculus, to use your Facebook account, which as you know, or as you should know, has an enormous amount of data connected and linked to you. It has data co cross-referenced and correlated with people you know, anyone you've interacted with. They have this network of data. They can tell exactly where you sleep, how long you sleep, you know, whether you're angry or sad at any given moment, who you're talking to, what, how they're feeling, what the ads they interact with and all kinds of stuff like this. The data they collect is absolutely frightening. And if you can do anything about it, you should definitely limit it or reduce their ability to capture that data, basically. But why is it a problem with VR? The reason it's a problem is because VR is so addictive, so emotionally stimulating and engaging that you can bet they want to addict you to it. In fact, there's been many whistleblowers that have come out in the past and said, that there are entire departments within Facebook, hundreds of millions of dollars are spent to, for the sole purpose of getting people addicted to the Facebook product, to getting people to spend more and more time there, even after that it's been revealed that the more time you spend on social media, the more your mental health declines, the more you get depressed, you get anxious, you start getting jealous, comparing yourself to other people and feeling bad about yourself. These studies have been done and the effect is very clear. As time spent on social media increases, mental health declines. And Facebook know this, they all know this. And this is why a lot of them have actually had to quit because they couldn't be involved with it anymore. What started off as a seem seemingly harmless company is now actively and knowingly decline, you know, de uh, decreasing people's mental health for the sole purpose of making money and controlling your data. That's, we, this is the, the thin end of the wedge. This is the tip of the iceberg in terms of why this stuff is bad. So let's get into it even more. The problem with VR is that they control what you see, they control what you experience, and they control even the things you're able to do in your own VR world. So an interesting thing is that when they announced VR, the video that they announced VR in, you know, the meta change, had comments disabled. And this is really, if this is a really clear sign of what's to come, 
especially with all the enormous crazy censorship we've seen on Facebook over the last two years, to the point where they will literally stop you messaging things privately to people if they deem what you're sending them to be misinformation or you know, against community guidelines, whatever the hell that means, right? It could literally mean anything. And in most cases, what it means is that the big money, big pharma, um, are basically paying to have Facebook label something as misinformation. If it goes against them making money, they will tell, tell Facebook, update your community guidelines, don't let people say this, don't let people share site uh, pages from this site don't let people share interviews from this doctor because it goes against our community guidelines, right? Now imagine when people are all hooked up to the VR world, not only can they censor what you say, but they can censor what you see. They can censor the literal stimuli that come into your senses, they, your sense of reality itself. They can decide what you see and how you experience it. It's pretty scary, especially when you consider the massive history of data abuse, negligence, manipulation, and like I said, the emotional manipulation and real-time um, human behavior modification experiments that Facebook have run. <laughs> this is a real rabbit hole, to be honest, but they've run these real-time experiments to see how far they could push human behavior simply through their algorithm. And these experiments were run, of course, without anybody's consent, without anybody knowing, and they essentially got away with it. I think they had to pay a settlement fine of a, a few tens of millions but to these guys, that's not really anything. That's, you know, a, a drop in the ocean compared to the money that they are making and that they get um, to have control over, basically. So if you can just imagine for a second how addicted, and people are addicted to their phones and to their social media platforms, especially Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp, uh, and I guess even YouTube, right? TikTok and things like this. They're addicted to it now. And it's only literally this big. It's a tiny screen you know, and the, the, you were addicted to the tiny red notification on the Instagram page that says you've got a new comment or something, right? Imagine how addicted we would be if if Zuck had control over what you see and experience. He can put you on the top of a mountain, he can, you know, give you these crazy experiences. Imagine how addictive that will be, right? And now consider how addictive it will be when they've put their entire company values and name and all of their resources into building the VR world, right? We know from Facebook and Instagram that they have departments dedicated to making you addicted to this stuff, to manipulating your behavior to the point where you crave it like a drug. And now imagine what they'll do when they can control what you see and what you feel and what you experience. It's gonna be pretty frightening, especially, especially for the young gener generation who don't know about this stuff. They don't know about the dangers, they don't know that the more time spent in social media, the less they're um, you know, the, the more their mental health will decline. They don't know these dangers. And yet people are just funneling into this stuff like it's the new crazy cool thing without knowing the dangers. Zuck has even announced that he wants to have um, religion. He wants to ha have control over religion within the VR world. He wants to have the future be a place where instead of people meeting in a church, they will have their religious worship and ceremonies inside the VR metaverse inside his VR metaverse, the Facebook metaverse. Imagine how crazy that is, right? And imagine, imagine now it's 10 years in the future, right? And you're sitting down in your virtual reality dinner table with your family who are, you know, separated. Maybe they're in a different country, different place. Imagine now you're, you're starting to tell your family something and Facebook censors the very words coming out of your mouth at your dinner table, the very words you were able to say. They, they, can, they can do that. You know, they can, they already do that. They already censor you in your private messages to your friends and family, let alone, you know, publicly commenting on things. They censor anything they don't want you to say, to talk about, any topics that they've been paid to say as misinformation. They censor that now in 2021 and 2022. Now imagine how much they will censor or be able to censor when you're addicted to the VR world and it's, you know, five or 10 years in the future, they're putting all of their money and resources into this. Just imagine the censorship. I mean, I just, it's just crazy to even think about what they'll be able to do. But luckily at the moment, it's a choice. The device is pretty expensive as it is. 
and they hold your data captive. You can't even log in without a Facebook account. And it's really so easy to avoid it right now. You can just not use it. You know, imagine if imagine how different your life would would have been if you never even made a Facebook account, if you never even made an Instagram account. Imagine how many thousands of hours you have wasted scrolling on these platforms and what have you really achieved? Absolutely nothing for, you know, with that time. They, however, have built up a very accurate picture of your your personality algorithm, your decision making, your feelings, your thoughts, your beliefs and your interests. And they've monetized it every step of the way. But really, monetization is the lesser of the two evils when you think about what they're really doing. What they're really doing is they are manipulating your very thoughts and beliefs with their algorithm. And this has been shown. This has been documented. There's been whistleblowers that have come out and said this. There have been uh, court settlements where they've had to pay in order to make this stuff go away, right? But of course, people don't forget this stuff. So at this point... I, you might be thinking, well, it's all doom and gloom. You know, oh, I was, I was really interested in the metaverse. I thought it was cool. And now you've said all this stuff. And now I don't know. You know, it's not all doom and gloom because now I will introduce crypto metaverse. And this is why things, this is where things get very different. So if you imagine Facebook's metaverse as this creepy, shady guy who wants to have access to five cameras within your own room, you know, within your own house, um, censor everything you're saying, track, monetize your data, manipulate your behavior. That's one option. But now think about all of the decentralized crypto metaverse projects that are, that are being released. So if you don't know, um, in the crypto space, there are many decentralized metaverses that have already been built. You can already go in now anonymously you don't need an account. You don't need a Facebook account. They don't even need to know your IP address. You can literally just log on and explore the VR world. This is how the metaverse should be. Decentralized, you know, um, easily accessible and anonymous. There is no need to have your health records, your, your personal data, your name, your address linked to your identity in VR. There's no need for it. So let's just leave all of that VR, um, Facebook VR stuff over there let him do his thing. And let's instead, if you are interested in VR and metaverse, move to the decentralized crypto metaverse space. There's lots of places, lots of projects I'm very excited about. I will link in the description to about three or four. Um, yeah, just off the top of my head, there's a few that you might want to look at. There's crypto voxels, there's Decentraland, there's Somnium space. Um, there's a few island projects as well. Like these, these platforms already exist and they don't track you, they don't collect your data, they're decentralized. And what that means for anyone who doesn't know yet is it means that no one company or one person owns the project. It's decentralized, like it's open source, it's open code, it's transparent, there's nothing shady going on. And, you know, best of all, you don't even need to trust them. It's a zero trust network, meaning um, you can log on anonymously and not give them any data. So even if they were shady, they wouldn't have any data about you. And this is the really important thing that I want to make very clear. You shouldn't be giving your personal data to, well, ideally to anybody, but especially not to shady companies like Zuck, um, when there are alternatives out there. Crypto voxels, I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, it's Decentraland that's completely anonymous. You can just log on without even a name. And that's how it should be. So hopefully this makes sense. And let me know what you think about this type of video, uh, talking about different topics like this. I, th I thought this would be relevant because a lot of you are interested in gaming and virtual reality and crypto. And so I thought this would be a very interesting take on uh, the Facebook metaverse. So let me know and I'll see you next time. Oh, and by the way, I, if you are interested in lucid dreaming, um, please check out my massive kind of webinar style video that I put together on this channel. There's no catch. It's on YouTube and it explains exactly how to get started with lucid dreaming, the different techniques, how it all works, the risks, the warnings, and how to do it faster. Link is in the description or in the pinned comment. Let me know in the comments what you think about Facebook's metaverse.